Hello, welcome back to another Gunpla review. Today we're taking a look at the FD-03 Gustav Carl Unicorn version. I don't actually know all that much about Unicorn, so uh, instead of talking about that, let's just get into the review, shall we? Let's start, as usual, with the articulation. Showing off the usable range of articulation, the Gustav Carl is surprisingly agile given its bulk. The head can move up surprisingly far, especially considering how far back it actually goes compared to the rotation point. On a ball joint, obviously, slight side to side. You can actually get a full 360, no trouble. Looks down, uh, okay. Uh, and there is a second joint at the bottom of the neck. This shoulder shield is attached onto an arm on the back, which can pivot up and down. Has a swivel here, which clicks in the back, but not forward. Maybe that's just mine. A ball joint at the top, and a hinge on that. The Shoulders have issues. Uh, inside the actual chest itself, there's a mechanism that allows it to come out and swing forward. And it's supposed to be able to also angle up. But because this is all plastic, and they didn't use a Poly cap. You kind of have to do this in order to get it to come out at all. And I mean, it's supposed to be able to come all the way up to here. But it doesn't want to do that because it's not a socket, it's just a tube that the ball joint sits in. As well, when you're not trying to do that, pull this out. No friction, which means that trying to get any sort of two-handed pose, not particularly effective. Uh, this blue piece can move out slightly, which is just to get it out of the way. Not so much for this arm because of the uh, grenade launcher, but for this arm it gets out of the way just enough to give just a little bit more outwards. The elbows are the same, so let's move back over to this side. There's of course Rotation above the elbow. Double jointed elbow, which surprisingly good crunch for something this bulky, though I do find that the lower joint is looser than the upper one, which unfortunately means that when you go to bend it, it breaks the arm instead of. Well, let's just bend it and then straighten it out. You can see the, the upper joint actually bends at this pivot and looks natural, whereas this one gives the additional range. But it's the looser of the two, meaning you have to adjust it. Again, maybe it's just my kit. Uh, moving down specifically on the left arm, this opens up and reveals the two grenades, which are color correct, by the way. They're molded in the same red plastic as the parts of the chest. And, of course, the wrists are on a ball joint. Moving on to the waist. Uh, here's where the bulk of this starts to get in the way of the articulation. It's a surprising amount of range, but this ball joint is much like the shoulders, plastic on plastic. It falls out a lot. In fact, you'll notice that it isn't pushed in completely on mine, and that's on purpose, because if you do push it in all the way, it has absolutely no hold on the plastic at all. In fact, I may actually pull this up slightly. Okay, that's not happening, but, uh, let's reattach that. Actually, that's not. Oh, now it wants to stay on. Uh, these pop off. If you move them up too much, they just attach on. Interestingly, these are pre-separated on the runner, 
And if I can get the light, it actually attaches onto the ball joint there, which gives it an interesting movement. It doesn't rotate at the piece, it rotates below it, which gives it more upwards movement, which is good for something that's bulky. The uh, butt flap actually has a poly cap attaching it on, which gives it a bit of movement. Again, something this bulky is nice to have. Moving on to the hips, if I can get the armor out of the way. Uh, ball joint. In Here's what's really odd about this. It is a ball joint into a polycap hinge, which, which has a swivel. There was absolutely no reason to make this a ball joint. Of course, the hips are really floppy, but again, not surprising given the bulk. Uh, the knees are actually very interesting. Let's move it over this way. You see, they have a regular knee bend, but that only gets it to about 90 degrees. But if you want a deeper bend, you can shift the foot forward a bit. Get this thruster bell down out of the way. Shift. Oh boy, I'm pushing on the foot. Yeah, it's a. Push it. There we go. And you'll notice it is noticeably lower. Then you just slide this up, bend it around, and then it gets a much much deeper knee bend if I can actually show it off now it does look odd from the front and I would recommend making sure this knee joint is bent all the way first so you can get the best look possible but still the uh the engineering is impressive. And finally moving on to the foot. It's a rocking joint onto a ball joint, which gives rotation, pivot, barely any to the back, barely any to the front. Pretty decent tilt, and you can rotate. So while it is surprisingly poseable for something this bulky, the bulk does get in the way. Of course, if you get something this bulky, you're probably not going to want to put it in a crazy action pose anyway. Moving on to accessories. Uh, the Gustav Karl comes with a pretty basic loadout. Of course, the shield is attached to the actual mobile suit, so that's not a separate piece. But you just get a very basic EFSF Beam rifle. I'll talk about this in a moment. And two beam savers. Now you're probably asking, those are the effect parts, where are the handles? Well, the Gustav Karl actually has storage in the hip skirts. If you open it up, take it off, because there's no way you're going to be able to get them out. You can see they're actually stored inside. So let's take one of those out for now. That does happen quite a bit, but it's not a big deal. Slide that into the hand. It does actually hold it fairly securely. You can I'll just That was my own fault. Once it's pushed in all the way. It's not going anywhere. It's fine. And you just take the beam effect part, which on mine, as you can obviously see, came bent in the packaging. Thanks, Bandai. And it can just hold the beam saber like that. Now, I said I was going to get onto this. Remember the shield? Well, this is the large arm. You also get this short arm which attaches the shield on in a 
way that kind of makes it stored on the back. Eh. I think it looks better like this anyway. I never use that. But, you know, the option's there if you want to. And finally, the beam rifle. You just... God, that's scary. The thing is, this is actually a polycap. But it's just incredibly tight for some reason. And it's the same on both sides, so I don't get it. But yeah, that just holds in, doesn't bump against anything, doesn't get in the way. Now, there is no storage for the beam rifle. I've checked. There's nothing under the skirt, nothing on the back, absolutely nothing at all. Alright, so it's comparison time, and this is a big boy. Not just in overall bulk, but it's also incredibly tall for a mobile suit. It's just a very imposing mass. Final thoughts on the Gustav Carl. This is an absolutely excellent high grade. The posability is not limited by the bulk at all. The only way that it is limited is slightly in the hips, and it's mostly just because of the actual design of the mobile suit gets in the way, rather than the bulk itself. Uh, there are a couple issues. The shoulders, namely, I mean, they don't really impede the movement. You can get the poses you want out of them, but it, they do come off. And the ball joint, while tight, doesn't hold in well enough to overcome the friction of the hinge to lift the shoulder socket up. And as well, the waist falls apart. Uh... Like I said, I'd recommend pulling up the inner ball joint slightly so that it makes proper contact because otherwise it will fall in half nine times out of ten. Super easy fix, but it is annoying that it's like that. Stickers aren't too annoying aside from the one on the V-fin. I painted my kit, so I didn't have to deal with that, but the black stripes on the legs... The small red rectangle on the crotch, as well as the blue on the V-fin, are all stickers in the kit. The ones on the legs aren't too big of a deal. The one on the crotch isn't a big deal at all. But the one on the V-fin, once you have to wrap a sticker around a part, it's never going to look good. Anyway... Thank you for watching this review. Let me know what you think down in the comments. Remember to subscribe if you like the content, and more importantly than that, share the video with people you think would also enjoy the review. Anyway, that's been all for this time. See you all again soon, and as always, happy building.